بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الكريم وبعد today's khatira is very short in regards to salatu al-istikhara or dua al-istikhara sayyiduna abu ubayda ibn al-jarrah radiyallahu ta'ala is to say very beautifully in regards to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he is to say arana al-huda ba'da al-ama fa qulubuna bihi muqinat anna ma qalahu waqi'u يبيت يجافي جنبه عن فراشه إذا استثقلت بالمشركين المضاجع. هيشو ساي عبد الله بن رواحة سري عبد الله بن رواحة رضي الله تعالى عنه هيشو ساي that our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is someone that he showed us guidance light after we were misguided after we saw darkness. now our hearts are certain that anything the prophet of Allah says it will definitely take place. so the people in the Jahiliya days, when they used to make a decision, if they, if they were thinking of doing something, before they used to make a decision, they used to seek help from idols. Or there was two other practices they used to have. The two other pra- one practice was called at You know, we all read Surah Yasin. In Surah Yasin, remember, it said, Qalu inna tatayyurna bikum. What is tatayyur? Tatayyur basically means bad omen. So for example, imagine someone needs to go on a business trip or someone wants to marry someone or he wants to do a, a, open a business uh, or he wants to meet someone or he has to travel far. He would come out of his house and he would observe the flying of the birds. If the birds, they fly towards the left, he will say, oh, I don't think I should marry her or I don't think I should go on this trip or I don't, sh- I don't think I should visit this person. He would cancel everything now. But if the bird were to fly towards the right, he said, I think I'm going to have a good day today, so I'm going to continue. That's called tatayyur. And there's another bad practice they used to have. It's called istisqa bil azlam. What is this? That's basically, uh, it means like taking help from divine arrows or divining the arrows. They used to divine the arrows. The arrows are not divine anyway. So they used to have some arrows, you know, and one of the arrows said, if al, do it. And another arrow said, don't do it. So they used to have 10, 15 like this. They don't know which one is do it and which one is not do it. You know, remember when they do this like football tournaments, they do this champion league draws, for example. They shuffle the ball, everything, yes. And they open it. Oh, Man United is not doing the Champions League, for example. You know, that's what they do, right? So similarly, he would like mess around with these arrows and suddenly he'll get the arrow out. And the arrow says, if I'll do it, then he'll go ahead with this task. And if the arrow said, don't do it, then that means everything is cancelled now. He's not going to marry her or he's not going to do the business trip. He's That's how they were doing it. This is all jahiliya practices. And like what Abdullah bin Rawaha said, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, arana al-huda ba'd al We were like misguided. We, stood, we were utterly blind. We were making so many silly mistakes. But Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us the true light that how to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not going to benefit from this, you know, arrows, or you're not going to benefit from this bird. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la adwa wa la tiyara. There is no adwa, there is no uh, things itself are not contagious, or, or don't, anyone who has anything contagious, don't give it to someone else. And there is no tiyara, there is no bad omen. The Prophet of Allah said, there is no such thing as bad omen, ignore all of that. In Return the Prophet of Allah's taught us salatu al-istikhara. Istikhara means seeking goodness from Allah. Talabul khair min Allah. So the Prophet وسلم, said, if someone wants to do something, then pray two rakat. The two rakat, no more nafal salat that you pray. Pray two rakat. After you finish your two rakat, then you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's just so istikhara is a dua. It's seeking goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you make a dua, and the dua of istikhara is very ma'roof. Everyone knows. I'm not going to repeat it. You know, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmik wa astakhiruka bi qudratik wa as'aluka min fadlik al azim till the end. You make this dua, and because it's a dua, the etiquette is very simple. Face the qibla, like a normal dua, raise your hand, and remember you're talking to Allah, so start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hamd and thana for Allah, send salutation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and then read this dua, inshallah ta'ala. After that, do it again for the second time and the third. Continue to do it until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs your, your heart to this task. You know, this is the normal process. It's a natural process. Don't expect something miracle to happen. The mistake that we make, we think something miracle is going to happen now. I'm going to have some 
some, I don't know, like Jeep will probably come down and pick you up and take you there. This thing's not going to happen. Some people, they say, I think I'm going to see a dream. And in the dream, I'm going to get some guide, guidance. There is no dream. There is no need for you. Just do it. Because you, it's like a dua. And inshallah ta'ala, because what, the dua itself said, Allahumma in kunta ta'lam. Uh, uh, very beautifully so oh Allah if you think this task that I'm about to do if it's good for me in my life and it's also in my hereafter and in my other matters oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, decree this for me facilitate this for me and give me blessings so we are asking Allah for blessing not for any miraculous dream or something like that. And then at the same time, Oh Allah, in kunta ta'lam anna hadha al-amra sharrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibati amri, fasrifni anhu wa srifni anhu. Oh Allah, then remove it. If you think it's going to be bad for me in my this life and the hereafter, Oh Allah, remove this from me. If you think it's going to be bad for me, remove me from it and remove this from me. And then, Oh Allah, you choose decree from me something that is good and make me happy about it. So this is it. The dua itself is very clear. You're asking Allah to make it happen. Now, if after Salatul Istikhara or Dua of Istikhara, someone done it for five days or seven days or 10 days or 15 days, whatever, and then they got married to this family, for example, or they have opened this business, for example, or they went on a trip, inshallah, there will be khair and barakah in it. That's it. And if it doesn't happen, then don't blame anyone. Say it's because of this person or that person. Say, I've done istikhara and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed my heart that it shouldn't happen. That's what istikhara is, that you always rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma khaba man istikhar wa ma nadima man istashar. The one who does istikhara, inshallah, he would not fail. And the one who does mashura, asking other professional help, inshallah, he would not regret. Two things the ulama, they said we should do in big, big matters. Number one, Seek help from the good people, people of the experts that you have within your field. And number two is that ask always help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us a tawfiq to do istikhara in matters, inshaAllah. Ameen.